Now I'd like to take a step back and import the same Word document into InCopy, but this time I want to look at the Show Import options. Let's dive in and see the difference on how we can manage bringing in styles from a Word document. I currently have no document open, just an untitled document. So I went to hit the plus sign and created an untitled document. And the other thing I've done in this document so far is I've gone into my paragraph styles panel and I've loaded the styles from the InDesign document that I believe is going to be the final destination for this copy. I did that so that way I can map them to the Word document styles later on. Now, I'm going to go to File, Place. File, Place, Control or Command D on the Mac will give me the same dialog box. And I'm going to find the History of Channel, the History of Travel Word document and bring that in. But before I click the Open button, I'm going to make sure that the Show Import Options is checked because I want to be able to see those options so I can manipulate them or at least discuss them. When I click Open, I get the Import Options dialog box. We didn't see this before, but now we're going to see it and learn about it. Starting from the top and working our way down, we have a lot of different settings. And if I spend more than 30 seconds changing the settings within this dialog box, I should save whatever I'm doing as a preset. So right here you can see there are presets. No presets have been saved yet, but I can save my presets in the future. Now, in the Include section, Word documents have a really powerful way of creating table of contents, table of indices, and notes and footnotes. Using the References tab on the ribbon, you can create those different types of content. In Design, the final destination for this story, can also use and recognize table of contents, table of indices, footnotes, and endnotes. So having these checked will allow these elements that are in the Word document maintain their status and I'll be able to use them and manipulate them accordingly in the InDesign program. Checking the box to import anything as static text is going to remove the formatting from that and you won't be able to convert it or you won't be able to use it in the way it was intended. In the Options section, use Typographer's Quotes. Typographer's Quotes are also called Smart Quotes. Smart Quotes are used when you're going to quote somebody what they're saying. The reason why we call it Smart Quotes is because you're going to quote smart people and bring out what they said that was important. Now, Typographer's Quotes are also Curly Quotes. Curly Quotes are not straight up and down. They're going to be curly around the text. Now, this means that they're used generally around text, not to indicate units of measurement like six feet, three inches. The six feet will have a single straight up and down quote, and the inches will have straight up and down quotes, but two of them. Formatting. The current setting for formatting is to preserve the styles and formatting from text and tables. Good idea. If somebody spent a lot of time in Word formatting content, we should bring that formatting in. However, when it comes to manual page breaks, Word documents have one text box per page from margin to margin, top, bottom, left, and right. But in InDesign, that's not how our text flows. We have text boxes and we've scattered them amongst images and other style elements within our design. So we don't have page breaks that are necessary because we don't have the same 8.5 by 11 or 7.5 by 10 inches of space. So I always convert my page breaks here to column breaks because I'm more likely to have columns within my documents than I am page an entire 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Below that I have the ability to import inline graphics. If you've ever tried to insert an image inside of Microsoft Word, you've learned what an inline graphic is because that's how Word by default inserts images. It puts them in line with the text and moving them is a nightmare. Unless, of course, you click on the image, go to the upper right and choose Text Wrap Options and choose something other than inline. Once you choose something other than inline, you can position it wherever you want. I bring in the inline graphics. The purpose of those inline graphics is because of accessibility, but I'll bring them in if they exist. Track changes. Track changes. We have collaborative environments in Microsoft Word, but you also have collaborative environments inside of InCopy and InDesign. So, it's a good idea that if you've been tracking changes in the Word document, 
that you can maintain those tracking of changes and you can bring them into in copy. So as changes are made in a collaborative effort, you can see where the changes are being made and they color coded in different ways. Import use styles is not checked and convert bullets and numbers to text. There are about 20 presets in Microsoft Word, and if you're only using one or two of them, like heading one or heading two, then there's no use bringing in the other styles. You're just going to clutter your styles panel for nothing. Convert bullets and numbers to text. Well, if you created a numbered list, an ordered list, or an unordered list, which is a bulleted list, then you want to maintain the functionality and formatting of the glyphs or the numbering that you brought in. InDesign and InCopy can handle those numbered items and there's bulleted items, so that way you might as well just bring them in and maintain them. Don't convert them to regular text. Now, the style naming conflicts. It says I have two conflicts and two paragraphs, so I'm going to have to see what those are. But right now, it's going to automatically adjust them to whatever the paragraph style and the character style is for InCopy. That's because I imported the styles from InCopy, uh, from InDesign. But instead, I want to see what those conflicts are, and I want to map them accordingly. I want to fix the mapping for them. When I click on the Style Mapping button after checking Customize Style Import, I can see the word styles are going to be coming in. Normal, Heading 1, Heading 2, Basic Paragraph, No Spacing, and then two character styles by Heading 1 and Heading, heading 2 character style. You can tell the difference between paragraph styles and character styles because of the symbol to the left. Over here to the right, the normal style here, I can actually apply a style to the right that matches up to that. Now, because the word normal didn't match any of the naming schemes I used, I can click where it says new paragraph style and grab the drop down, and I can find the one that I considered normal. In my case, it's the main story. So if you're going to have any content that you're going to bring in that has a normal style applied to it, make it the main story. The heading one is the largest heading on the page, so I'm going to choose the heading orange here. So that's going to apply the heading orange to that automatically. The heading 2 is a subordinate style. Let me see if I've got anything that's a subordinate style. So my thought is that I'll bring in, for example, uh, I'll do the event heading style for that one, just for this example. The basic paragraph, because it's the same spelled words as the basic paragraph in my InDesign document or InCopy styles, it pulled it already. And then no spacing has already mapped to no spacing. Apparently I had a no spacing style there. Now, I don't have character styles too much. So if I look here, I can see what I've got available. I do have heading one character style. So I'm going to do, for example, I'll turn that into a calendar heading. And then the heading two, I'll also make that a calendar heading. Okay, so now I've mapped the style names. I've mapped the information from Word to my InCopy styles, the ones I imported from InDesign. I can click OK, and I can click OK again. Now, once the text comes in, notice in the story I can't tell any kind of formatting whatsoever. But if I click on Layout View, I can see the styles that were applied. History of Travel, Middle Ages, Methods of Travel. Also, in Style or Gallery View, I can see the heading orange style has been applied, the new spa no spacing has been applied, event heading, no spacing has been applied, and so on, so on, so forth. So you can see the names of the styles that have been applied and have been imported from uh, the Microsoft Word documents and how they've been mapped to the styles I've already created inside of my InCopy document. So using styles from Microsoft Word, you can map those styles and you pick and choose what it is you're going to work with. It's a very powerful way to determine the formatting of how the content is going to be brought in from Microsoft Word.